is greater than 1.96, and it looks pretty skewed just by the distribution. But that's probably not quite enough information to determine whether you can run a t-test or a regression analysis or a correlation. Uh, to be honest, I would probably do uh, those type of basic analyses on this. And my rule of thumb is uh, skewness uh, greater than 3. Uh, is when I really start to get concerned about uh, various analyses being applied to these non-normal data. Uh, but I'm going to write another, I'm going to put together another video about when you should be concerned about SKU. But at the very least, this is how you can estimate SKU, and then you can test it for statistical significance, and then you can examine it in the distribution. Now let's look at another uh, sample of data which kind of drives the point home as to why you can't rely on statistical significance testing of SKU to help you determine whether you can do a statistical analysis on the data or not. Let's look at the other variable. Call it salary. Uh, I call it subscale 1. So we go into statistics, we've got skewness, that's all we need, just the same options. It's going to be, the, it's going to be skewed in the opposite direction. It's going to be a slight negative skew. See here? The skewness is estimated at negative 0.399. And the standard error of skewness, very small, 0 0.060. Now if I test that for statistical significance, I get negative 0.399 divided by 0 0.060. So that's a value of negative 6.65. And because that's greater, then negative 1.96, we reject the null hypothesis of no skewness. But when you look at the distribution, it's, it's not too non-normal. What's happening is that there's a ceiling effect in the data. No one can get larger than 50. But overall, this distribution is mostly normal with a ceiling effect. And in this case here, you'd probably feel fairly confident that um, you could apply some uh, parametric statistics to the data and not uh, and and still be confident in your type one error rates. So this is a really puny skewness value, negative three point negative point three nine nine. But because the sample size is so large, n of one thousand six hundred and sixty four, you end up rejecting the null hypothesis of no skewness, and then you feel like you have a problem when really. You don't have a problem here. Yeah, there's a, there's a ceiling effect, but you should still feel confident to do some uh, regressions or correlations on these data. They're, they're normal enough. In fact, I have another, um, another video on testing distributions for normality if you want to look at that further. And I'm also going to follow this up with a, um, another video to talk more about the practical significance of skewness. So not just statistical significance, which is greatly impacted by sample size, but what about the practical implications? Just how skewed can data be before you're concerned? Anyway, at the very least, I'll add a reference to this YouTube video so that you can cite uh, the procedure of dividing your skewness by the ratio, by the standard error of skewness and any value greater than 1.96 should be considered statistically significant. And that's on the positive and negative side, negative 1.96. Now I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.